Hi, my name is Nate with SalesPad, and this is a short video on the Sales Document Search functionality. Sales Document Search is the tool that we use to find sales documents. Uh, it allows you to search open, historical, and voided sales documents, and gives you a fair number of options on filtering through those different sales documents, uh, opening them from there, and viewing customers from there as well. Uh, so to get to Sales Document Search, we have two options. You can either click on the Sales Documents button, in the ribbon up at the top here or you can go to your modules drop down and go to sales and sales documents now there's one security setting that enables access to the sales document search and we can find that in the security editor by filtering for sales documents and making sure that the sales document security is checked there's also two subsettings. Uh, print allowed allows you to print or email from the uh, sales document search window. And close finished will close the finished window automatically, uh, which pops up when you have emailed a sales document. But with those enabled, we can go back to the sales document screen. And we have this search by field. This is the, the primary search functionality in the sales document search. Now you can search by either document number or PO number. Uh, this PO number is your customer PO number that's been entered on the sales document. We also have the document types over here. This will filter what sort of documents get returned when you do a search. Uh, so if I were to uncheck quotes and invoices, the only sales documents I would get back when I search were orders and returns. We also have in our search options the match beginning checkbox in the prior months field. Uh, match beginning makes it so when you enter a string to search in the document number or PO number, it searches from the beginning of the field only rather than through the middle of it as long as this is checked. If you uncheck this, anything you enter in the document number or PO number will be searched through the entire string of text in those respective fields. Prior months will allow you to set how far back you want to search for sales documents. So if you're only looking for one month's worth of sales documents, you can just set it to one and it'll only show you things from the past month. We can do a blank search here by just pressing enter in the document number field or clicking the search button. And it'll tell me that I haven't entered any search criteria and it could take a while. I'm gonna say I wanna continue though. And you can see all my sales doc types are either orders or returns. I don't have any quotes or invoices returning because I have them unchecked in the document types window up here. You can see I'm also pulling open, historical, and voided documents. Uh, and everything is from the past nine months or from a date in the future. The two primary search functionalities, document number and PO number, uh, are a bit limited though, so we do have a few options for filtering these, uh, these orders down further. Uh, I can right click on the column header and go to my auto filter row, the show auto filter row option. And this brings up a row uh, right below my column headers that allows me to free type into the field. Uh, so let's look for any orders that start with a B. And this is going to pull everything that starts with a B. If I wanted to instead search for any orders that had a 6 in them, I could put an asterisk in front of whatever I was about to type and type in the number I'm looking for. And this is going to return anything that includes a 6 in the field. So you can do this with full strings of characters and you can do this on any of these columns. Uh, so you could filter by customer number here. I can look for Aaron Fitz and it's only going to return those. So this auto filter row really allows you to customize this search even further. You also have the option to bring in other columns to filter on through the column chooser, which you can also access by right clicking on the column headers or clicking this orange drop down on the left and going to columns. This one gives you the checklist. The column chooser from the, from the column headers gives you a customization window where you can drag and drop columns on from. So I'm going to pull in my customer name as well. You can see that just populates the column. I can move these around on the grids. You'll see it shows me a pair of arrows where I'm wherever I'm going to leave that. So from here, let's filter this to Aaron Fitz. And I only want open orders. And I want to print these. So I can go up to this print button, click print, and it's going to tell me I'm printing nine documents. By default, this is going to print anything that's populating in the grid. So the more documents that are in the grid, the more documents are going to get printed. Now that goes for the email and fax functionality as well. I don't want all nine though, so I'm going to say no. 
and I'm going to check this selected documents only checkbox. This makes it so the only thing that these print email and fax buttons affect are the documents that I have selected in the grid. So I can click on one of these and hold down my control key and select individual documents or I can click one and hold the shift key, click another and it will select everything in between. For those, I will go to print now, and it's going to print five documents. I say yes. It's going to bring up my print dialog and allow me to select what document format I want to print. Uh, it'll give me my printing options, and then I can either print to a printer or do a quick print to send it to the default. Likewise, you can use the email functionality, which brings up a similar form, but once I'm done selecting my report options, I can click proceed. And this brings up my email template. I could select what template I wanted to send. I can enter a subject, who it's from, things like that. Uh, here, because we're sending bulk emails, you're not able to enter individual email addresses. You need to either select a shipping email, a billing email, or both. And this will pull from whatever email is set up on the document itself. From the search window, I can also click on individual document numbers, and this will pull up that sales document. And I can do the same with the customer. It's these blue hyperlinked fields. So in review, if I open my sales document search and type in the beginning of a document number with match beginning checked, it's going to filter for all those document numbers. It does keep my filter down here, so I can clear that and show me just the ones that I've searched for. I can open those documents from here, I can print them, I can open the customers, or I can just bring in other columns and view the information. And that is sales document search in a nutshell. Thanks for watching the video, and we do have a lot more available on our website at www.salespad.net. Thanks.